Alrighty guys, welcome back. We are back out on the water. It has been crazy trying to get a day where we can come out here and fish. The wind has been so crazy. The weatherman's wrong about 95% of the time, so really we can't even rely on the forecast the night before. We actually gotta come out here and see for ourselves what the conditions look like. So we have some buddies out here. CKW's already out here, and he told us the fish are biting. He's already got a couple red fish and some sheep's head. So, Redbeard's on his way. I just got on the water, and now we're heading over to these bridges, and we're gonna see if we can't find some sheep's head. If we can't find some sheep's head, we're gonna come up here to these marshy areas and see if we can't find some redfish. All right, guys, so what I'm doing now is I got this sweet little taping knife from Home Depot the other day. I'm just scraping these barnacles off here, see if we can't get these sheep's head to a little bit. So I just flipped a couple rocks. I found two little Two little mud crabs. Luckily I have a size one J hook. So it's small enough that they're gonna stay on there. Now that I just chummed up that piling, maybe I'll grab a sheep off of it. Yeah. Did you? We got James back here from CKW Outdoors. He's on a piling. He says there's a pile of sheep's head over there. Just robbed him. So we're gonna see if, if we can catch one of his fish. We're gonna do a red beard and still his piling. Oh, you got crabs, dude. You bad, I just got two mud crabs off of two rocks over there by the. Oh, these two fish. Yeah, that's it. That's all I need. Man, it's so flat out here right now, too. Last time we were out here, we couldn't even hold on these pilings very good. Yeah, there's some. They're, they're down there chewing right now. Where you at? You all the way on the bottom? Yeah. Yeah, just pick it up a tiny bit off the bottom. I just got robbed the second time. Not to get it robbed. That was a little time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, change the plans real fast. James said that he caught some redfish over here on these, over by this dock where this little channel comes in. So we're gonna come over here and see if we can't find some redfish. Give those sheep's head a little bit of time to fire up. I've always had my best luck with sheep's head either early in the morning or later in the afternoon. Normally around like, uh, I don't know, three or four. So we're just gonna play around and explore this area a little bit. Maybe we'll find something. Maybe we'll find some structure or something that we've never fished before. Fish on, little red fish. I don't know, it's a striped bass. That's a nice striped bass too. Or a hybrid, whatever you want to call it. You guys go. There's a hybrid. They're pretty fun. That was a fun little fight. Get a measurement on him and then get him back in the water. Seventeen total length. That's cool. I had that little hybrid on a little paddle tail. Put some uh, some of that Pro Cure shrimp flavor in there. And then just on a, I don't even know. That's like a maybe sixteenth ounce jig head. I don't remember, but tied to uh, my fluorocarbon with a loop knot. That's all I use for that guy. Just so you guys know. Oh, hey, everybody, look who's here. Oh, hey, Mike Rob. showed up. Hey, Rob. Oh, yeah, guys, Rob's master duty outdoors out here. 
We're so shallow, look at all this stuff. Watch out for that thing. That thing will break your rudder. Just a big freaking pipe sticking out of the damn ground. I don't know if you guys know this or not yet, but look what Mike's got on his kayak. Oh, shoot. It's live scope. Got a live scope. But hey, guys, but Rob wanted to fish in four foot of water, and it didn't work in that. Yeah, we're in three and a half foot of water. <laughs> I got stuck over there. It's like six inches of water. So when we go back that way, we got to hug this right corner because it stays three feet all through there. Alright. Mike checked up, school redfish. Right where James said they were at. That's right where James said those redfish were schooled up at. Well, they hit you, live bait? Yeah, yeah, they're right there at the foot where they're on top, bro. There's a bunch of them, there's a bunch of them. That is insane. Holy crap. How big was he? 24. 24? Yeah. I got split shots. Buddy, I'll go find him again. We'll get you a fish. <laughs> get onto something though I tell you that he's pretty fun on this light tackle this little birch of prey jig with a shrimp on it got that little guy look at that heck yeah someone's been eating him up too Dang it! I've been getting destroyed right in here. No, right here in between me, you and that ramp. There we go. That's a good one. Come on. 
Yeah, buddy. That's a decent one. Hey, there you go. Shrimp. Yeah. Yeah, boy, look at that. That's a pretty freaking redfish right there. Golly. This is probably the guy that's been stealing my fish for a minute now. Get that hook out of them. Check them out. Look at that. Look at them dots on that boy. Woo! That's a pretty fish. How, how long they gotta be? What's the slot? How much? Yeah, 23. Hey, 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 listen. That was my last shrimp. He's been stealing my shrimp for ever. All right, fellas. So same thing with sheep's head. So the finger just went right in there, right behind that. His fin. That's how you bleed him. Get finger out. Look at all the blood coming out of him now. That is my first ever slot redfish. I don't normally target them, so I don't catch them very often. But since we found a little pile of them, we figured, what the heck? We're just gonna come over here and find them and catch them. So we're gonna get him in the bag. I don't even know what a redfish tastes like. Redbeard says it tastes pretty good. So I'm gonna take his word for it. We're gonna get him in the bag. We're gonna take this guy home, do a little catch and cook on him. All right, guys, I caught him on my toadfish convict rod, and I also caught him on a birds of prey sweeper jig. So that was pretty cool. That's my first ever slot redfish. Yeah, I've never, I never really targeted him before. Yeah, especially on this little convict rod. Convict rod and birds of prey sweeper jig. They're a little sweeper jig. Yeah. Yeah. I know, my hands are pretty frozen. <laughs> that was a pretty fun day of fishing. It's really cold. We can't fill our hands anymore. So we're heading back in. But we didn't catch those redfish. A couple of slot reds, nice slot reds, then a couple of little dink reds, and then that hybrid bass. So that was cool, no sheep's head today. James from CKW, he did end up finding a, uh, a sheep's head, so that's cool. It's still a really slow bite right now. Hopefully this cold weather is pushing them out towards the bridges and we'll get back on them. But in the meantime, at least we caught something and now we're gonna go home and do a little catch and cook. So let's get to that part of the video. All right, guys, we're back at the house. I got the redfish on the table. Get ready to cut them up. We're gonna do redfish on the half shell. I got the pit boss fired up. It's gonna go to about 400 degrees, and then we're gonna slot this bad boy on there, and I'm gonna show you guys how I season it, how I spice it. You guys let me know if you guys ever cooked redfish on the half shell. I heard it's the best way to eat a redfish. You guys let me know in the comments below. How do you guys prefer to eat your redfish? All right, so I'm gonna make my cut, starting from a diagonal down to his pelvic fin, pretty thick. Uh, scales so come down through there start making your cut this way stay on top of that spine this is what helps when you have a sharp knife because you're gonna go through all those ribs There you go, there's your first fillet. I'm gonna come over here to this side. We're gonna do the same thing. Come down from an angle, from his head. Get up under those scales.
Now, you could go the other route and just come in through here and clean up around all those, that rib cage, so you don't have to worry about cutting through. But, it just takes longer. There you go. A little bit of meat left in there. Probably could have done a little better job, get a little bit closer. That's right on the, the spine. Kind of see through it. Practice makes perfect. I'll do a better job next time. But for you guys that uh, like to catch crabs and all that other stuff, you can save this, throw it in your crab trap, and do a really good job on catching some crabs. So, anyways, that's how you take that bad boy off. All right, now I come in here. Just get those ribs out and that belly. Whew, it is still windy around here. No kayak fishing today. Wind's supposed to be throwing going, gusting up to 25 miles an hour again. It's like nonstop. Can't catch a break around here. Honestly, it's like being back in Montana. All right, take that belly out. You guys can clean up some more of those bones if you want while you're in here. Come in here, just cut a V. I usually take out all your small little, small little guys, little pin bones. Rip that out. All right, so that's your fillets. Now, let's clean them up and get them spiced. All right, we're all cleaned up now. What I have, it's got a fresh lemon. I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna roll it out. Is that bad boy? Give ourselves a little squirt. Oh, I said a little squirt. Go with that, I'm gonna use this other half. I'm gonna cut some slices into this one. And we're just gonna put this one on the fish. Now, a little avocado oil. Then with that avocado oil, we got our Everglades seasoning. Can't ever go wrong with Everglades. Florida product. When you're in Florida, you gotta use Florida stuff, right? So they say. Throw some of that on. This stuff could be salty, so you don't wanna use too much of it, unless you like salt. And then a little fire. I like fire, so I'm gonna do my half with some chipotle. Sarah's half, we're gonna not use any chipotle. Spice it up just a little bit. And of course, you gotta hit it with the garlic sauce. So, getting those barnacles out the piling yesterday, and I cut my finger on my pinky. I'm telling you right now that that lemon juice that I just got on it, whew, not very friendly. You wanna just pat that in, mix all that stuff around. Now I don't like an overly spiced fish. One, it's too salty, and then two, just takes away from the flavor of the fish. So we're gonna throw that on there. You know what, I'm gonna cut the rest of this lemon up too since it is burning the crap out of my finger. What the heck. Let me just let that lemon cook with that fish. All right, the grill's fired up. We're at about 400 degrees. I have my lid closed. I'm gonna rotate this over. Now, we're putting that directly over the fire, but the fire's covered by the, the smoker grill. So, we're gonna leave that on there. We're gonna let that cook for about 10 minutes, and then uh, we're gonna come out and check on it. While the fish is cooking, we're gonna come inside and make our cream sauce. Some heavy whipping cream, 
some cream cheese and a little tzatziki sauce. It's my secret recipe that I'm sharing only with you guys. Throw on some heavy whipping cream. And we'll just let that work. We'll let it boil itself down. This other pan that I have, this other pot, I got you know, a little cilantro lime rice. Can't go wrong with that. I also had a fresh pineapple that we cut up. It's over there on the plates. I don't know if you guys can see it, but you'll see it here in a minute. And the secret to pineapple I just found out. I'm like 40 years old and I just found this out. When you buy pineapple from the store, put it in your pantry for like a week, wait till it starts turning yellow, and then um, that's when you cut it up. That's when the pineapple's like delicious. Anyways, so we're gonna let this come to a little bit of a boil. If you guys hear some crazy noises in the background, that's just my African gray making crazy, stupid sounds. Let's take my tzatziki sauce. This stuff is pretty much melted down, rendered. Take our tzatziki sauce, chuck it in there. Mix all that in. Rice is just about done. As you guys can see, the fish is over there. That's done. Now we're just waiting for this stuff to warm up a little bit more. Right, and mine's the one with the spice on it. So grab that, put that over on my plate. Sarah doesn't have any spice on it. Put that over there on her plate. So this is what our fish looks like. We've got a fresh pineapple, we've got some rice, we've got some avocado, and we got our fish with our sauce. We're gonna go over here on the table and we're gonna try this stuff out. All right, we're about to see how this redfish tastes. That sauce is really good. Did you try it? Mm -hmm. That sauce actually turned out really good. All right, guys, you can't go wrong with <clears throat> making something like that. Woo, got that spice in there. I put some chipotle on mine. Got a little kick. But that's a uh, that's really good textured fish. That tastes pretty good. And a fresh pineapple. Throw a little avocado on there with it. That's pretty tasty. Pretty awesome. Take the kayaks out. Go into the water, catch your fish, bring it home, throw it on the grill, cook it up, provide for yourself, provide for your family. I like it. Make your own little homemade sauces, try something different, you know, do the half shell, or you can bake it, or you can flay it out, make some fish tacos. You know, the sky's the limit when you're cooking with fish. And leave a comment down below. How do you like your fish? Do you like it in the ocean? Or do you like it on your plate? And if you like it on your plate, how do you like it on your plate? Yeah, we need recipes. Yeah, give us some recipes. Sarah's getting tired of all my old recipes, but my sauce is pretty good. This thing's fire. I like that sauce. I'm gonna write that sauce down. That's my secret sauce. You guys don't be telling nobody about it. All right, I'm gonna eat this for lunch. And um, the weather's too bad to go out on the kayaks again. Like I said, 25 mile an hour winds, and then the rest of the week it's windy. And it's just been a real crappy winter. Can't even go out and do any fishing because the winter's been so freaking horrible. Moved to Florida to stay out of the freaking cold and the wind. I didn't go far enough south. I should have went further south. Mm -hmm. If you guys are looking for a house to buy, there might be one in Navarre because I'm going to move a little bit further south. <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys on the next one. Don't forget to hit the like, hit the subscribe.